Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In this video, we're going to be looking at a dishwasher that is not washing the plates correctly and not spraying the water out of the spray arms correctly. This video is on a hot point dishwasher, can also be used on an Indeset dishwasher or any machines manufactured by the Whirlpool Group. Now, the problem with this dishwasher is there is no water coming out the spray arm and I'm going to be showing you how to diagnose the fault. There are a couple of faults that can occur when the dishwasher is not washing correctly. Firstly, if the machine has insufficient water going into the machine, it's unable to build up a pressure which would turn the spray arms. Now, spray arms have no mechanical parts in them. They are completely controlled by pressure. Now, if the water has not got to a reasonable level inside the dishwasher, the pump may only be filling half the system and the bottom spray arm may be turning, but the top spray arm may not be turning. You'll notice on the spray arms that there are holes at angles and you can see these holes that are angled. This is there so that as the pressure builds up, it sprays water at an angle hitting the plates. This causes the spray arm to rotate. If there is insufficient pressure, this cannot actually happen. This is usually caused by people not fitting the filter system back correctly. You've got your mesh filter, which has also got your collection trap. You've also got a stainless steel mesh filter. Now, both of these filters need to always be put in correctly and made sure that they actually fit tightly. Because if any food particles get down into that area below the mesh, they go into the water system. And therefore, if you look closely at your existing spray arms, you may have bits of food or dirt building up in the spray arms, causing the spray not to work efficiently, and therefore the spray arm cannot turn at the correct rate. The second problem that can occur is you may have not enough pressure. This could be because of a weak pump. It could also be because there is no pump action at all. Now on this machine, we have a problem where I can see the machine filling with water correctly. It's getting to the correct level. The motor should be coming on, but I cannot see the motor actually coming on on the multimeter, which I'll show you in a second. And this could be because there is a problem with the motor. So we're going to go through all the mechanical parts and have a look at what is causing the problem. And then I'm going to be showing you how to replace the motor on this machine. OK, I'm going to show you three clips now of the machine working inside and you will actually understand what should be happening with the spray arms and all the fittings inside. Our first clip from inside the dishwasher is showing you that the water pressure that is hitting the plate is causing the arm to rotate. This is actually causing it to spin at the correct rotation, therefore actually washing the plates correctly. Now here is a dishwasher with the bottom tray filled, but the top one not. You can see the amount of spray coming off the bottom, but the top arm is having trouble turning. This is because there are no plates for the water jets to push off. Here is a dishwasher with the top spray arm fitted incorrectly, and someone has left the nut loose. Therefore, the spray arm is not actually getting any pressure, and it's struggling to turn. OK, let me explain to you what should happen. We're going to set the machine on, but I've already had the machine working and this is the water level that you should have in the machine. It's usually about this much over the base. Now I'm going to start the program completely again and we're going to be looking at the multimeter to actually understand what's going on with the machine. OK, I've turned the machine off and we're ready to start our test procedure. First thing we're going to do is close the door turn the power on and we're going to turn the machine on and select a program and I'm going to select a hot wash and we're going to start the machine. Do notice that our baseline reading is 3 watts on the meter. I'm going to press start. The machine now has turned the pump on and that water that's in the machine is being emptied and we are drawing roughly 20 watts of power. This is because the pump is running. This then will stop. The machine will wait a few minutes or a few seconds and we're back down to three watts when the pump has stopped. It will now kick in with the water valve and the water valve on these machines is approximately seven watts of power. 
So we will see this go from 3 to approximately 10 watts. This means that the water solenoid is open and the machine has started to fill. And this normally takes about 30 seconds to a minute before this happens. You can hear water going into the machine. It is drawing 10 watts of power. This means that the solenoid now is open and we can hear water flowing into the machine slowly. It will take approximately between a minute and five minutes to fill depending on the water pressure and depending on the water valve, how clear it is and everything else. It will vary from machine to machine. The water comes in through the solenoid and then goes through a matrix which you can see on the screen here. Inside that matrix is an impeller which rotates and counts the amount of litres going into the machine. When the machine is full of water, it will then turn on the motor and the heating system. This is the motor and the heating system. And let me explain the numbers that are written on this. The wattage of the motor at 240 volts is 1650 watts. The motor is 70 watts of power under load. So we should be seeing somewhere in the region of 15, 17, about 1700 watts if everything was working correctly when this is energized. Now while this is filling, I'm just going to show you the ohms reading and let me set my meter a second to ohms and I'll put it there so you can see it. And across the heater, we have approximately 31.7 ohms reading. Using an Ohm's Law calculator, which is in the description below, you would be able to work out the value of the heating element. Now, on this heating element, there are two thermostats. And these thermostats there, to one protect it doesn't overheat, and the other one is a cycling thermostat, meaning it will kick in and kick out as it reaches a required temperature. On the machine, you have an NTC sensor as well, which tells the circuit board what temperature it is. I've just heard a click and this is now drawing 12 watts and I think that is the soap compartment being energized to drop the tablet into the machine. We went down to 4 watts and now we're drawing 1570 watts which is 6.8 amps. This means that the heater has come on. You can actually hear the machine heating. Now, we're not hearing any motor action. In other words, the spray arms are not rotating. This could be one of three reasons. The motor is jammed, which I do not suspect it is because we're only drawing 1500 watts of power. And you would hear the motor either humming or possibly a large wattage being drawn because the motor is unable to turn. But we are able to see that the heater is drawing power which is approximately, if you use the Ohm's Law calculator in the description below, with the Ohm's reading we had, which was 31.7, that would tell you that the heating element is approximately 1650 watts, depending on the age and also the calibration of your meter and so on. But what's actually happening is it's heating. It has now stopped heating. This is because the water inside this compartment was not circulating and one of these thermostats has now cut out to turn the heater off for safety reasons because you, couldn't, you wouldn't want this to continue boiling water without water circulating through it. So it's there to protect the machine. Now, we're only drawing 4 watts of power which is approximately what our baseline was in the first place. So, what could be happening? Number one, the circuit board is actually sending no power to the motor. This means that the motor, when we take the machine apart, should have continuity across the windings. Because if we do a test on this again, if the heat has just cut back in again. But if we do a test on this, I've got an ohms reading of approximately 40 watts. It's not a very good connection there. But basically what I'm testing here is I've got continuity across the windings. This gives me a good indication that the motor is good. Now in the back of the motor, and it's very hard for me to show you this, there is a thermal cutout. And this is designed to disconnect the windings completely if the motor ever got too hot. So either the windings itself may have failed, 
The thermal cutout has failed because the motor has jammed in the past and the windings have got too hot. You either have a bad wiring connection between the circuit board and the motor, or the circuit board is not sending power to the motor. Now the only way we will be able to test this is by stripping down the machine and doing a test on the motor, which we'll do in a second. But while this is kicking in and kicking out on the thermostat, and really you shouldn't, it's not good for the machine to be kicking out and kicking in on the thermostat. It should be working on the NTC sensor as the water goes around the machine. But I'm letting it do this while, so you can actually see what should be going on. Now I've got another meter here which basically has got a baseline reading of 0 0.9 and I've made a jump lead up to test the motor as I would do on the bench. There is no earth on this motor because it's a fully insulated motor but I'm going to put my test lead on and if we look at this meter now and I'm just going to hold the motor there, no a matter of fact I'll switch it over so you can see the impeller inside, the impeller is in there and I'm going to plug that in and I'm going to turn it on. You can hear the pump turning and it's drawing 28 watts of power but this is without load. When the water is in the machine it will be drawing more power because it's drawing more power to push the water around the machine. But I thought I'd just quickly show you that so you can understand that you can best bench test this motor because it has stamped on the plate 230 to 240 volts 70 watts and that is 70 watts under load. So we now know that the machine is not uh, drawing power on the motor and this is because either the heater, is, uh, sorry, either the motor has gone open circuit or the motor is not receiving electricity from the circuit board due to bad wiring or a bad circuit board. There is a relay on the circuit board which basically clicks in and clicks out as the motor is required. Sometimes relays can become faulty and you can see more about that in other videos. So I'm now going to turn the machine off. I'll just press pause. I'm going to press stop. I'm going to turn the machine back on and I'm going to start the machine again just until it empties. Now the pump's kicked in again and we're draining all the water down. You can hear the water exiting the machine now and it is 30 watts of power and you'll see that wattage actually drops slightly once the load comes off the machine. There you go. The wattage has dropped to 23 and you can hear that the water has emptied from the machine. So we'll turn the machine off and now we need to start the strip down process. Okay, first thing you need to do is disconnect the water supply disconnect the machine from the electricity and remove the waste holes from the fittings. Now on a lot of machines they have a sealed base but on this machine we're lucky we have an access compartment but I'm still going to take the lid off quickly and the two side panels not only to show you the matrix to let some more light into the machine so you can see what I'm doing. Okay firstly two screws holding the lid in place remove the screws and always keep the screws separate so you know where they come from. The lid slides backwards and comes away. Need to remove the hose off there and tuck that out of the way. Now we have a couple of screws at the back of the machine. This will vary from machine to machine. Different models are assembled in a different way. Turn the machine round, open the door two screws on each side panel. These are threaded screws, meaning they're not self-tappers because they're going into steel. The side panel will come loose but there are some clips at the back and we need to remove the plinth. Hidden down here are two screws and I've got a special long screwdriver to get at them. The machine will come forward slightly so I can pull this panel off. You will notice there's a little plastic clip there 
and you need to lift that panel over the clip so it slides away. Now the panel can be removed. Again, lifting the panels away and just leaving the clip off, the panel will come away. Right, I thought I'd quickly show you this because it is relevant. Um, the water comes into the machine, goes through the flow matrix which goes to the machine. This is called the matrix and you can see it's quite dirty up here. Uh, these matrix uh, systems can get clogged and sometimes you need to leave them soaking in a very good descaler and uh, degreaser. But basically as the water goes through the machine this is the impeller counter and these also can become faulty if you have a problem with your machine not filling with water. These are the very common fault. So the water valve lets the water into the machine, comes through the matrix, into the actual machine, and the water is measured. Okay, on the other side of the machine, and I've put my torch here to help you see, you have insulation. So we'll first fold that back. Now here you can see a pressure switch, which also measures the amount of water in the machine to make sure the machine never overflows and water comes out the door or anything. But down here, you can see the motor. Now, this motor, again, has an earth wire attached to it. The heater we know is working, so we don't need to test that. And at the back here is the motor plug. So I'm going to disconnect the motor plug and just carefully wriggle the motor plug out. Now, you could connect the machine up to the power and then measure the voltage that is coming from the circuit board. But the first thing I'm going to do is actually test the motor. Because if the motor is open circuit, this will mean that the motor is faulty. It's also worth double checking your work by connecting the machine and also checking the power is coming to this lead, which I won't do in this video because I have to reconnect everything up. But first thing we need to do is put our test lead with our multimeter on there to ascertain whether the motor is good or open circuit. Right, what I'm going to do is two tests for you. Firstly, I'll just stick my multimeter on here and I'm going to use my test lead because it has the correct pub, uh, plug. Sorry, And I'm going to disconnect my test lead. But what I'm going to do is now insert my two probes onto the test lead. I'm going to connect that to the motor and I'll just turn my meter onto ohms. And when we connect this, if the motor has any chance of being good, it would have continuity. There is no continuity on this at all. It's open circuit. If it's open circuit, this means that the motor is actually receiving power, but because it's open circuit, it's not drawing power. So I'm going to quickly disconnect this again, and I'm going to do a secondary test for you, just so you can actually see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the test lead back up to the mains power. And I'm going to plug that into the mains electricity supply. And I've turned the electricity on directly to the motor and it's not turning. This means that the motor is faulty. Okay, I've tilted the machine over because on these dishwashers, it's extremely hard. If you do not have this plate that comes off, I can warn you now, it is a nightmare to replace the motor. Um, it's a lot of items that have to come off to gain access, but Hotpoint actually in their wisdom on a few occasions have created an access plate at the bottom. Now there are two locking tabs, which you need to press down while holding your thumb on it and the plate will come away. Be careful when sliding it out because there are a float switch which you can see here which is still attached and I need to disconnect the wiring, wiring harness off this and that also needs a clean up. Here we have the motor. Now one of the things I do not like about this and I'll bring the camera closer they use these poxy throwaway clips instead of using Jubilee clips. 
So I'm going to have to break these two clips to remove the motor off the hoses. And then I'm going to have to rummage around to find a couple of Jubilee clips to do the job properly. Uh, these clips cannot be the normal size Jubilee clips. They need to be slightly narrower. And I do hope I've got them in stock here. Okay, to remove the motor, these clips are a pain in the posterior. Whoever thought of these needs shooting. They're great for manufacturers to fit, but they're a nightmare to get off. So what I do is give it a wriggle a couple of times to loosen it, and then it will come away, and I'm able to remove the clip. These clips basically, uh, I'm going to be careful so I don't cut my fingers, basically lock into place, as you can see there. Now I'm going to do the same with the top one, just using the grips. Give it a, a couple of twists. And then it should be loose enough that I can pop this off. Now I can disconnect the wiring. And then the motor slides out. It's a little bit awkward to get out and the motor comes away. Now normally you would remove the motor off the heating system to replace the motor but I have a complete system so these are quite tricky to undo because you've actually got to twist fit them to take them off and you'll notice there is a couple of lockable catches that stops this turning and you need to actually split the motor off the unit. But as you can see, it's the same motor. It actually looks a lot newer, but I imagine that this has gone open circuit or the windings have gone open circuit. Okay, just to show you, these motors do twist off, but I do really recommend using a good cloth when holding the motor because these edges are very soft. Just grab hold of the motor, and it goes anti-clockwise and then will pull away and there we have the problem you can see all the gunk build up and this motor has separated away and oof it stinks but in here you can see all I haven't got a screwdriver so I have all this that has built up over the time and this should have come out and this might have been damaged or blocked but basically the heating system is now good but the motor is open circuit but I'm not going to separate the other motor because I know it's got a good seal and I don't want any chances of leaks or anything else so I will actually list this heating system on the website for someone else to save some money in the future and as we said we have new and used um, heating systems and motors at the website so if you do need any parts feel free to drop by and have a look okay before I fit the new pump, uh, pump housing and heater I'm just going to show you the original clips that came off this machine were seven millimeters wide a standard Jubilee clip is 12 millimeters wide and I have some narrower Jubilee clips which are ooh, eight, eight and a half millimeters wide. Um, basically, they're not narrow and not quite narrow enough, but they will suffice and do the job correctly. But really what you want is a Jubilee clip this wide and they are ooh, about eight millimeter. Uh, so really you're looking for Jubilee clips that are seven millimeter wide. That would be the perfect size. So I'm just going to drop my two clips on. I've already prepped them up ready and just drop that one on I would have liked this one to be a little bit bigger but that's all I have in stock at the moment but that will go on no problem just make sure they sit nicely in the groove and now we can actually slide the whole motor unit on and then connect up the wiring after
there are location lugs for the holes to slide on. Why manufacturers put that rubbish onto the machines, I do not know. I'm sure they keep trying to find ways to build obsolescence into machines. There are no thoughts towards the engineer or the average person at home that has to repair the machine in future. All they seem to be doing is producing so that they can cause consumption which is half the blooming world's problems at the moment. Now I can connect up all the wiring, the heater, the earth to the heater, and then I can put the motor plug in. And now I'm going to reassemble the machine off camera and then I can take you through the differences between the two values with regards to the meter when you can actually see the consumption of electricity being used. Okay, we're just going to start the machine now. Select the same program as we did last time, which is the super hot wash. And we're going to press start, but I'm quickly going to flick you around to the other side so you can see the matrix actually filling. Okay, I've left the machine on and you'll see the machine start to fill in a second and you'll see the way the water flows through the matrix to actually fill the machine. And we'll just wait a second or two and the water will go in through here and also come in through the bottom here. So it'll go in, up, over the system which I'm talking about that can block here and then it will flow into the machine through here and also go down to the salt dispenser at the bottom. And as you can see, the water's coming up, going through here, and you can see a bit of calcium already built up in the top, and this is flowing down to the salt container, and then it will rise. And as this gets filled, it will also flow in through the machine, any surplus. And you can see closely down here that the little wheel is rotating, and that is measuring the amount of water going through the machine. You'll notice that I didn't fit the two side panels to the machine and that's because I will be inspecting for leaks after it's done a couple of cycles. Uh, but the machine's still filling with water. It's drawing 10 watts and we'll keep an eye on this now. Uh, the first thing I think we should hear is it actually stop filling. We may hear the soap dispenser clicking in and then we should be seeing a much higher wattage than we originally saw. I would anticipate somewhere in the region of about 1800 watts with all the components, 1750 to 1800 watts. Uh, there might be variations because it's a different, um, it's, it's a used pump housing. I don't know the age of it. And there we go, the motor has kicked in and we have 74 watts with the motor. And that's the motor is 70 watts, our baseline was 3 watts, and we may have some other components kicking in. Now we're going to wait now, and as the water is circulating, we should see this go up in a minute, uh, with 74 added to the 1650, so we should be seeing somewhere in the region of 1700 watts. That was the soap dispenser clicking, and now in a few seconds I'd expect to see the heating system cut in. Of course, as the pressure dropped, the wattage and the heating system is cut in. So we're now drawing 1850 watts. I'll let the machine go through a few cycles just to make sure everything's good for leaks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to support the website by buying parts off us. We have new and used parts available at the website. And do remember, if we really did help you, you can always click on the Bipolar Beer page. We also have many FAQs and repair guides to help you with all your domestic appliance repairs. Thanks very much indeed for watching.